How are you? This is Jim Prusak. I'm a physical therapist. I've been working for over 20 years in the field of pain. And I'm going to talk to you guys today about how two small almonds in your brain play such a huge role in your pain. Now, we're talking about the amygdala. Okay, the amygdala are actually two tiny little almonds, just a, about a centimeter, less than two centimeters big only about 0.3% of your entire brain, yet they play a massive role in chronic illness. And we're getting a lot of cool research coming out in the last couple of years. I'm gonna go over some of that today to really show you guys how important this amygdala is in your pain and also in your recovery. Now, I'm gonna share with you maybe three studies, but first I wanna tell you about this amygdala. Okay, the amygdala is the emotional center of the brain. It is the fear center of the brain. And it's the area of the brain that has many connections to other parts of the brain. It also has connections to your body through your nervous system. So we have peripheral nerves that come up from your body that connect directly to your amygdala. And we also have connections from your amygdala going directly down into your body. So it's very much a communication center between your brain and your body. Now, being that it's a center of emotion, it's been implicated in many, many problems in the past. Now, the main thing that's been shown to be involved with is things like anxiety, disorders, depression, bipolar disorder, issues with autism, um, PTSD, things like that. So anything that has to do with our emotions um, is implicated with this amygdala. And more recently, what we're finding is that it's not just emotions, but it's actually linked with pain. And this is in alignment with what Dr. Sarno talked about years ago before he knew any of this, is that a lot of pain can be emotional or can be influenced by our emotions. And so what's happening, what we think is happening, is that our amygdala is at the center hub of this. The amygdala is what is actually creating, amplifying, or causing us to have pain in our bodies when there might be nothing wrong. Okay, so what I wanna show with you the first study here, and I'm gonna link these in the notes here. The first one was looking at, and I'm gonna pull it up here on the screen so if you see me going over here, was looking at um, some research. So a lot of the research now has been done in mice or in rats because they can't do this on the human brain, it's too difficult. But what they believe is that the findings they're getting is going to be very much in alignment with what we see in ourselves. So these studies I'm going to share with you came out in the last couple of years. Um, the first one was in the journal Pain from this year, August 2021. And the name of this study was The Active Role of Central Amygdala in Widespread Mechanical Sensitization with Facial Inflammatory Pain. So what they found here was that this amygdala was responsible for creating widespread pain in the body. Okay, so they, they took these mice and they created some pain on one of the paws of the mice. But what they found was, this, was that this amygdala has the ability to create widespread pain in the body. Now this is in alignment with what we see with a lot of chronic pain that can be in multiple areas of the body, not just in one area, it can move around so this may be an explanation of why this happens is through this amygdala area of your brain. Okay, so it can create sort of sensitization, which I talked about on some of my other videos about chronic pain. So it creates a sensitization in the body through this amygdala. And so that's why we can have um, sensitivity to touch. We can have other areas of our body that start to hurt in addition to the original area or can move around. So this is an explanation of why. Now, the second study I'm going to talk about, and there's many, many of them, I'm just only pulling out three of them for today, was uh, published in December of 2020, so just a little bit last year. And this one was titled, A Higher Gray Matter Density in the Amygdala and Midbrain is Associated with Persistent Pain Following Total Knee Arthroplasty or Knee Replacement. So again, what, we're, what they're finding is that the amygdala has overactivity or higher gray matter density. Okay, there's too much going on in it. 
And what they found, this was done in humans, what they found was that people who had total knee replacements but still had persistent pain afterwards had an elevated amygdala. Their amygdala was, was activated. Okay, so the conclusion was that persistent pain six months after knee replacement is associated with higher grade density in the regions involved in central sensitization and pain-related fear, which may contribute to the development of persistent pain after surgery. Okay, so this was taking place in the amygdala. Okay, they did brain scans so they could see where the parts of the brain that were, were lighting up. Okay, so they said that gray matter density and the right amygdala, and what's called a PAG, correlated positively with the summation of pain. Okay, so this is quite interesting because, again, we've classically seen this amygdala as being known as the fear-related center of the brain, the emotional center of the brain, and we have not really looked at it as being a pain center of the brain. So it makes a lot of sense, especially in light of the work we're talking about here, where we think a lot of the pain is just emotional. It's based on fear. It's based on you having suppression of anger and other emotions. So this is in alignment with this. Now, the last study I'm going to share with you guys, and I love this one, was also done in, in 2020 in May, and it was done at Duke University. And the title of the study is Neurobiologist Finds Potent Pain Suppression Center in the Brain. A single off switch dampens the response of dozens of pain promotion centers. Now, you know what I'm talking about here. We're back to this almond in your brain. There's two of them in the temporal lobes and the side of your brain and your limbic brain. This is the amygdala, okay? Duke University research team found a small area in the brain, again, only 0.3% of your entire brain in mice that could profoundly control the animal's sense of pain. Somewhat unexpectedly, this brain center turns pain off, not on. It's also located in an area where a few people would have thought to look for an anti-pain center, the amygdala, which is often considered the home of negative emotions and responses like the fight or flight response and general anxiety. Okay, so this is massive. This is, again, these studies are validating Dr. Sarno's work. They're validating the fact that we have the center of a brain, an emotional center that is responsible not only for creating widespread pain in the body, but when we can make changes in it, can also turn off the pain. Now, what they did was using a, like a light sensor to stimulate or to turn off a part of the amygdala. So they were able to do this in mice. And, and what they found was that, um, they found that they did some like anesthesia of this part of the brain of the central amygdala. So they're finding there's different parts of the amygdala. It's the central part of the amygdala that they think is really implicated in pain through that emotional center. So the, the research, um, the researcher in the study said that, you know, these mice were licking their paws or face wiping behaviors. They were having pain related behaviors. And they said that these behaviors were completely abolished at the moment the light was switched on to activate the anti-pain center. And the researcher, Dr. Wang said, it's so drastic. They just instantaneously stopped licking and rubbing. Now, I wish we could do this. If I could find a way to shine a light on your amygdala and all of a sudden your pain is gone, that would be amazing. But we're not able to do that, right? So, but we have ways of getting to our amygdala, okay, of working with it. Now, one of the most obvious ways, and I've been talking a lot about this with you guys, is overcoming fear. This is the fear center of your brain. And when, you're, when you have anxiety or fear, your amygdala is lit up, okay? It's, it's actually creating pain or it's amplifying pain in your body. You gotta overcome anxiety and fear, okay? We gotta get that, that the drop down. We talked about the best way to do that is to not avoid anything, okay? To stop avoiding things that you do out of fear or out of fear of the pain, okay? So fear avoidance. We've gotta look at our emotions. We've gotta get in touch with our emotions more. People would with a lot of chronic illness and chronic pain. I work with these people. Typically, they're not very well in touch with their feelings, emotional feelings. This is called alexithymia. It's a very real condition, highly associated with chronic pain. We need to get people more in touch with their emotions and feelings because they act as triggers to cause pain. People have had PTSD, trauma. That amygdala is still turned on now, potentially, and that is what is causing a lot of chronic issues in the body. We need to get that turned off. Okay, so 
another study here also showed that people when mice that were um, involved in running, so they actually had neuropathic pain when they got this mice running on the treadmill, so which means they got them exercising, that amygdala went down. The activity of the amygdala reduced and they had some pain relief. So this is the importance I talk about it, getting active, getting physical. It actually has the ability and time to turn off your pain through your amygdala, to exercise. So this amygdala is really interesting. It's not just turning off with doing emotional work, reducing fear. It's turning off with exercise. Okay, so we really want to get uh, our focus into this part of our brain, understanding this and really putting into place how we can get our amygdala to turn down, to get the, the actual volume of the amygdala to get smaller, the activity to get less. This amygdala is also attached to your prefrontal cortex. I talk a lot about that. There's the connection to other parts of your brain. We need to get the connection and message going that says, look, we are fine, we are normal, we are okay. We need to tell our amygdala that so it can start to quiet down. And then what? We want to generate more positive emotions. We want to generate more positive feelings. We know the amygdala doesn't just process negative emotions, it's processing positive emotions as well. And it's connected to the reward center in your brain. So this is why when people are engaged in something they enjoy, they're happy, they're doing things, they typically feel better and this is because the amygdala is changing the emotion in it, and which is creating a sort of inhibitory response in your body. It's, it's downplaying pain, it's changing the chemicals. So I hope you guys realize that uh, two almonds that are so small can have such an impact on your life and that we need to get in touch with these more often for pain relief, for recovery from our chronic illness. Reach out questions. Again, I'm going to link the studies here so you can have access to them. I want you guys to understand this. I'm here for support, consultation. That's my job to help you guys move forward. All right.